Hey folks, it's Chris Wall. Have you wondered more about Terraform state files, such as where to put them, how to secure them, how locking works, and all those other components? You're tired of just seeing local state files on your computer? In this video, it's all about Terraform state, including the fact that we're gonna move a local state using the budget example over to a remote backend running in Terraform Cloud. I think we're gonna have a great time, so let's get coding. Let's start by looking at the budget code that I created in previous videos where we added a child module. I've gone ahead and cleaned up the cloud resources so we have a clean slate. Let's run the apply, but this time we're less concerned about what's gonna be created by the config and more about the state file. So I'm gonna leave it in this kind of do you want to do this mode for a moment and look to the upper left. We've got two files. The first one is the Terraform TF state lock info file. That's because even though we're using this default local state, it still locks it whenever there's actions being performed on the state file. That makes sure that there's no conflict where you're trying to change the state file in two different ways at the same time. There's also the terraform.tf state file. That actually is the state file. And again, because there is no declaration as to how Terraform should configure its backend state, it's just using the default, which stores the state locally on disk. Put simply, the default behavior of Terraform is to save the state locally, and anytime there's gonna be mutations or writes against the state file, or even potentially, the state file is locked so that only one source can modify it at a time. Let's go ahead and accept these changes because we're gonna look at something else right after we make this resource, the refresh command. At this point, the resources have been created, and you can see on the left that terraform.tf state file persists because that is the state file. It's locally held using the default local state. But what if somebody changes something in the cloud? The way Terraform operates is it kind of expects to have total control over the resources that it creates and maintains and destroys in the cloud. That's kind of why the state file is there. It can keep track of what's going on in the cloud environment. But what if someone goes in there and makes a change by hand? Well, that's where the refresh command is super handy. The new monthly budget that we just created is the Climbing Grackle 20 budget. That's using the random name and random integer from a previous video. And you'll notice that we're way above the forecasted budget. It's just not configured properly. Maybe some industrious young admin went in and said, cool, that's wrong, I'm gonna go ahead and fix it. At this point, the budget looks a little healthier. We've changed the budgeted value from $100 to $1,000, and perhaps the errors or whatever that that person was experiencing go away. What happens to the Terraform configuration? It's gotta be upset, right? This is where the refresh command comes in handy. So we'll do a Terraform refresh. And that's going to look at the state of the resources that have been constructed and compare them against the state file to see what's changed. Aha, notice that the state file, which we're looking at now, contains a limit amount of 1000 in the state instead of the 100. That's because we refreshed the state file and now it's aware that there's a change. It's worth noting though that refresh is not the same as a plan or apply, it just refreshes the state file. And by default, whenever you do a plan or apply, it's automatically going to perform a refresh as part of that process. You can turn it off by setting the refresh equal to false if you've got just mountains of resources, you know they haven't changed and you just wanna get through the plan a little bit faster, but there's caveats, so use that wisely. It's also worth remembering that sensitive information is stored in the state. So one of the major drawbacks of using a local or default state is that you now have sensitive values, sometimes things you really don't want being saved as clear text on your computer, saved as a file. This leads me to the concept of remote state. And really, it's just gonna be a staple of your life using Terraform, especially if you're collaborating with other people. The concept's pretty straightforward. Instead of storing the state file locally on the computer, we put it somewhere else, such as in Terraform Cloud or Amazon S3. And the responsibility of encryption in flight, encryption at rest, and locking and things like that are all beholden to the remote back end that is storing and versioning and securing the state file. I'm a pretty big fan of using Terraform Cloud to store state. It can be used for many other things, but that's one of my primary use cases. In order to accomplish this, we need to perform three steps. First, log in. So Terraform, login. This is gonna set up credentials in the user profile. Once we say yes, we're asked to create an API token and you can give it a description. So we'll call this the state demo token, something like that, and create it. And at this point, it's displayed on the screen. Warning, never show your key to anybody. I'm just doing this as a demo and then I'm gonna throw it away. Start by copying the key. Once the key is acquired, paste it into the value. You won't see it because it's masked. 
hit enter and your token is saved. And this is gonna create a configuration file containing the token so you don't have to input it in the future. Another way to see the file is to go to your credentials.tfrc.json file, and that's gonna show you the token and it's saved in your user profile for Windows under the terraform.d folder as that particular file. Again though, seriously, don't show this to anybody. This is the secret access key to get into your environment. I'm just showing it for demo purposes. Once the key is created, you'll need to build a workspace in Terraform Cloud. I'm gonna gloss over a lot of the specific details because they have great user documentation, but this is a pretty basic workflow. Start by going to new workspace. We're gonna build one as an API driven workflow because I don't want the CLI or a version control system causing things to happen. I just wanted to store my state. And then I'm gonna give it the name of monthly budget. I've already got it typed in here and hit create workspace. There's one minor tweak we need to do after this, and that's by going to the settings, go to general, and change it from execution mode remote to execution mode local. At this point, this workspace is only used to contain state, and we're only gonna associate this workspace with this one monthly budget project. All we need to do now is create a Terraform block telling it to use this remote backend. So I'm gonna paste in this particular block. It's saying, hey, Terraform, I want you to use a remote backend. The host name that you can reach for this backend is app.terraform.io. The organization, because we need that for the Terraform cloud, is Wall Network. And the workspace I specifically want you to use is monthly-budget. Nothing here is talking about keys or codes or passwords because we've already logged into Terraform Cloud and we built that JSON configuration file that's gonna be used whenever Terraform Cloud needs me to authenticate against the API. Now that we have a backend defined, we're gonna to need to move the state off our local disk and into the remote. So let's start with an initialization. And that's always gonna be required, whether you're changing a module or a provider or a backend, init is required. Notice that the first thing that happens is a state lock because we can potentially write to the state at this point. The Terraform's pretty smart, right? It says, okay, over here, I've got this local state file and it's on your drive and it's all working and everything's good. And over here, you've configured a backend that's remote. I don't see anything inside of this remote. Do you wanna take the local file and basically copy it on over into the remote area so that you have the exact same state file in the backend at the remote? So yes, I would like for you to copy it over. I don't want an empty state. We'll say yes. And at this point, the configuration is complete and the state now exists in the remote backend. You still might wanna clean up the terraform.tf state and the backup file from your local disk. You don't need those anymore because they're saved in the remote backend. I can also see the state if I go to the workspace and click on states, here's all the different states. There's only one and it's triggered by Terraform. And if I click in here, I can see there's all the information. The really great thing is that Terraform Cloud does almost all the work. It handles all the encryption. It makes sure that all the versioning is done for me, that the locking is handled. It's a great backend for remote state. Not everything has to be part of a full configuration for the backend. You can do what's called a partial configuration using line commands or environmental variables to supply missing pieces. So let's show this. I'll go ahead and let's delete the wall network organization out of the config. If I start with terraform init, I can use a parameter called backend-config. I can set the value of this to a file that contains all of the information for hostname and workspaces and organizations, or I can pass it key value pairs. In this case, I'll do equals and then a quote, organization equals wall network. Close my quote. Now this still works because we have a partial configuration defined in the terraform file with the missing piece being provided by the key value pair with backend config. By the way, working with state is a major component to the Terraform Certified Associate exam, so you'll definitely need to know this if you want to pass. As a final step, I went ahead and deleted the local state file and the backup, and we noticed that if I do another plan or apply or really anything, it doesn't matter because we're contacting the state file remotely in Terraform Cloud. Whew. State, right? It's no joke. There's a lot to learn with it. Fortunately, Terraform as a tool is really good at guiding you and providing some little hints as you work with state in the CLI. Now, I only covered Terraform Cloud as a remote backend, but perhaps you're curious about different backends. Let me know in the comments below. Alternatively, head on over to twitch.tv slash wall network, click the follow button, make sure notifications are on. You'll be told when I'm live and you can ask me all the questions about Terraform that you want, and I'm happy to answer them. Until then, Happy terraforming.